Hello, World Civilization 106 class. Welcome to week eight. I want to thank you for uh, your patience with uh, me uh, last week, and uh, I hope you felt comfortable to try to reach out and at least, um, you know, you know, call me or give me a text if there was any issues um, that you were experiencing. I didn't receive any so I'm, I'm assuming that everybody was okay and it looks like for the most part you all were able to handle <laughs> this this week well and um, I don't think most of you are too bothered by me putting this out uh, this this announcement video a day late having said that I want to address some things about um, the discussions and I'll mention something about the exam due uh, this week and so Okay, so I removed having a paper due, and we focused on, I, I had you all focus on the discussion on Zoroastrianism, and I made very, very clear, specific requirements for the discussion. You had to address two articles that were in contrast with each other in some points of view, and I asked you to also address the video on uh, Satan and the religion for breakfast uh, video. You could not get full points if you didn't do all of those things. And um, there's some of you, uh, you did so well and you missed, uh, you didn't get everything put in there. And this time I went ahead and give you full points if you did that. If you did not mention the name of the article or the authors, and you didn't address the video, um, you're, you, you're not going to get full points. That's why I didn't get full points. And I actually was still being generous by giving 10 points without taking away more. Because the whole point of the discussion was to demonstrate knowledge of those things. I, I, I removed having a paper done so that you could spend time actually reading and doing an analysis for this. So uh, on this week, I, you know, I mean, for last week's work, I'm going to grade kind of easy in terms of the fact that if I saw that you got most of what I asked for um, addressed, I gave you full points. I uh, haven't been able to grade everyone's yet, but it, uh, if you had 10 points, that's why, um, instead of the full 15 points. And um, I will allow for you to you know, add something to it and get full points. But if you go back into the discussion, you can't just reply to other people's comments and say, well, I agree with Bart Ehrman. Uh, you have to demonstrate you actually read the text and engaged with it. And I saw a lot of you that, that did the post the last minute. And I think many of you didn't realize that you needed to actually do all of this prep work before you actually got into the discussion. So no judgment. We're, everybody's very busy. There's a lot going on, but this. But I just want you to be clear on what is being asked of you, and I want you to understand that this is a very sophisticated college level approach to, to dealing with the topic. I want you all to understand that you know high school. Is, you, you generally have the uh, A, B, C, D. You know, uh, multiple choice question and you guess or you say okay so this answer true or false and what you're seeing what I've been trying to show you in this class is that historians they they uh, uh, they debate topics and they debate them not because there's nothing to grab onto but sometimes there's not much and so you know what, what I wanted you to actually like get a feel for is okay so you know you have an interesting approach here where, where where some of the scholars that we were covering said wait a minute just because let's say Judaism and Zoroastrianism or, or Christianity and Zoroastrianism share certain ideas th that are similar um, that that doesn't necessarily mean that that uh, one was influenced by the other they could be independent and then you have another one kind of saying, yeah, but, you know, uh, these cultures did have a lot of interaction. And so it'd be impo it, it seems kind of ridiculous to say that there was no influence if we're seeing them being interacting with each other and then they start having similar uh, um, kind of religious ideas. 
Um, but what this shows is that neither some of these things can't necessarily be proven, right? Because unless you have somebody directly from the time period saying, by the way, we just studied this other religion, it's a pretty good idea. I think I like the idea of resurrection. So I'm keeping my religion, but I'm just going to add that in. You know, <laughs> but usually that's not how it works. Okay, right? So um, this gives you an opportunity to kind of visualize how things develop in history. And to understand w where historians actually have a lot that they can look to, and sometimes when there's a very little that they can uh, work with. And when it comes to reconstructing the past and, and, and making sense of everything, right? So these are the kind of practices that I want you to get involved in. And when I have a discussion like this, that requires you actually looking at the text. And I, you know, with the uh, video on Satan, uh, some of you were kind of just focusing on the fact that it talked about Christianity in the video, which makes me think that you might not have actually watched the whole thing, mainly because the main reason why I had you watch this one was to talk about the influence or the debate about Zoroastrianism, because that was our theme for this uh, 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 week, or last week, right? And so, I mean, it's okay, you know, I, I, you didn't lose points for that, but um, um, what I'm trying to remind you is, is think about every time that I show a video, there might be a wide range of topics covered in it, but f you, you can be assured that if I have a topic, like if, you know, t this, th our theme was Persia and Zoroastrianism, the main reason why I had you watch the Satan video was not the topics of Christianity, which we are going to do later on, but the possible influence of Zoroastrianism in Persian culture. Uh, and that's what I wanted you to, to zero in on, okay? Um, and so I just want to remind you of that. That's, you know, think about what you're looking for when, when we're going over an assignment, like information-wise. So yes, I, I want to see proof that you watch things. I said you'll get full points if you simply make two points made. So if you just focused on the Christian part, that's okay. But I'm letting you know that, let's say, when it, by the time it gets to the discussion, away from the video notes, everything should be geared towards the actual topics that we're talking about. So I hope this is very clear, okay? Um, and I'm going to maybe start doing less papers and focus more on discussions, but I might start grading a lot harder on the discussions, especially if I'm seeing that you're not doing the reading. Then I'm just going to give five points, cause, because the whole point of these assignments, again, is for you to get engaged with the material and to prove it, okay? You won't lose points for getting things wrong or having an analysis that's different from anybody else's, including mine, but you gotta get involved with the material, okay? Having said that, now I just wanna mention the exam is this week. Really, I'm looking for about the same that I'm looking for a Sunday paper. If you figured out what to do on a Sunday paper, you figured out what to do with this. There's just more time you have to spend just more content being drawn in. I really don't make my class set up to focus on exams, or and I don't do quizzes. Um, I have my own reasons for that. If I was required to by the school, I would I would you know do more. Uh, I do. I mean, it's not that I don't do them and I do value them, but but I'm mainly concerned that each week you're you're learning all of the material we're covering. Okay. And so what I always want you to do is focus on that. So the exam is worth, you know, uh, a certain amount of points that are, are more than a paper. But as you see, if you do well on my exams and you don't do the work weekly, you're not going to get a great grade, okay? Um, if you don't do that well on this exam, but you're keeping up with your work, you're probably going to do fine in my class. And that's how I set it up. If you stick to doing the work that you need to do in this class every week, that is the key to success, okay? So, um, uh, all right, so last thing I'm going to mention, we obviously have a very, um, it just seems like this era, I'm just calling it the COVID era now, I'm sure historians, that's what it's going to end up being called. On top of everything else that's going on, between the war in Ukraine with Russia still raging, that affecting prices everywhere, inflation who to blame and what to blame and uh, you know January 6th committee the issue of guns and now we have this with the Supreme Court we are having a toxic brew a mess 
of a lot of things that it's it's a very uh, I think that most people who study history, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, have to be feeling a, you, you can't look at what's going on and take it lightly. Um, and so I want you all to know that I'm I'm feeling this with you and I'm taking this in and I, and I thought, how do I want to approach this because I don't like to be silent on political issues that are important. I also don't like to alienate any of you as my students. I want this to be a safe space for my students. What I mean by safe space, meaning that you're you, you know that you're not judged by your politics in my class, that you can, or your religious views, that you come into this class to learn and you're treated fair and equally, all right? So I think everybody's on board with that's a good approach for a professor to take, okay? At the same time, I'm also a human being and, and I'm an American in a time that's uh, a lot of crazy stuff's going on and so then there's the other question should I not use this platform to try to like make one statement or the other what I thought about doing here is what I'd like to because I have grown up in I've been around very different communities and my political evolution and my spiritual evolution have been unique I guess you could say I don't really cover all that with you, be, again, because I'm trying to preserve this space for you to feel comfortable about just coming and learning in my class, okay? But what I thought I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start posting, um, maybe in the next day or so, different um, posts about different cultures and societies in the past and now, and how they approach the topic of... Uh, abortion and uh, where the freedoms of that are at with compared to other cultures and how to, to maybe see look at where our country is in space and time compared to those other ones um, and I also might put some different perspectives on some of the religious ideas that I know influence some of those uh, topics so what I'm hoping is these are going to be uh, on the announcements. I post them. You are not required to read any or, or to watch any of these videos. And, um, you know, you may start to figure out more or less what side a uh, position that I'm taking on it. Um, but again, I just want to mention that, um, you know, we're all here to try to learn right now in my class. And uh, uh, that's how I see all of you as my students. Um, and um, as I've grown up, like I said, in many worlds, I know that women on all sides of the spectrum also have very strong opinions about a topic that is directly related to women and their rights and their bodies. And there's the whole debate about what is the right and the existence of, of a what, what is a fetus is it a human like all of that topic so again okay so I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to send some information later on that will at least give you some different perspectives on uh, to, to pause and look at this very very controversial and very um, potent topic right now because I think that that um, the direction that everything is going in makes everything in America feel a little uncertain on, on many levels. So, uh, uh, anyways, having said that, peace and blessings be to all of you in my class, and may your uh, day uh, be going well, and um, we will be in touch.